Hey guys, it's Sharon from Digital Nomad Quest. And this is Sean with Everything REI. And we have an exciting announcement. We are engaged. I'm gonna show you guys a proposal video right here. Why are you so zoomed in? Alright, cheese. <laughs> we were on a carriage ride in Dallas and he basically proposed to me on camera as you guys saw like a little selfie video what was the process like for you i mean it's probably one of the hardest things that you have to do as a guy right because you're all by yourself and you have to make this a special moment for both of you guys originally i was going to propose to her somewhere in our trip i just didn't know where i didn't hire a photographer or anything like that so it had to be more of an impromptu moment when everything felt right we were at a rooftop bar and i was going to do it there but there were just too many people i didn't feel like it was a really nice intimate moment and then as we were hanging around dallas she happened to see a carriage ride I thought this is a perfect moment. So as we were approaching the carriage, I like dug for the ring in my pocket. Lately, she's been asking me to take a lot of selfie videos for both of us because my arms are longer than hers. And so when I did it, I, you know, I took a photo of us, I took a photo around showing the carriage ride. But then when I brought it back, that's when I proposed and caught her on camera. We got that priceless reaction and it worked really well. I thought it was really sweet because I feel like a lot of them are staged and this was just like a total surprise. I had no idea it was happening. I didn't think he was gonna bring the ring on the trip cause like there was another trip we took and he was like, oh, I'm definitely not doing that like on a trip. So then I was like, okay, he's probably not gonna bring it while traveling. So it totally threw me off guard and it was perfect. Now that we're engaged, we actually put up a questionnaire on my Instagram asking if you guys have any questions for us at, like for a Q and A video on YouTube. And we got a bunch of questions back. So we're gonna go through one by one and answer you guys' questions in this Q and A video, couples edition. You ready? Let's do it. So looking at these questions here, some of you guys just asked me a lot of like personal finance and investing questions. I'm gonna try to keep it to the couples edition. So kind of what relates to both of us. So first question, how did you guys meet? We met through the algorithms. Algorithms, he always says this. And Not the YouTube algorithms, but feel free to smash like button <laughs> to help this video get more traction. Oh, very nice. One time we said that to somebody that we met through algorithms and she was like, math? But no, this was actually through Coffee Meets Bagel. It was a dating app. It's not a swipe, I don't think. We just tap the There's like a, button. Like, button. like yeah. button. What was the process like? So we actually went to a boba shop near him. It was like a block down. So I was like, really putting an effort here. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I know the area, right? So I know this is a good place to go to. Safe environment too. Whereas if I said, oh, you know, I have to drive to your place. I don't know if I'm gonna pick the right spot, right? So. Sure, sure. But first impression it was great i had a great time on the first date i felt like i put my best foot forward as well and look where we are now so i did everything perfectly did everything perfectly yeah first date i ended up asking him so many questions i was like where are the questions back to me oh this is going great <laughs> she's carrying the conversation the whole time but it ended up great like we met up what seven times in like 10 days or something like that which was like we knew we were into each other which was cool yeah. next question so a lot of questions here are asking are your finances merged or separate like how do you guys handle your finances so let's talk about that a little bit so we both have separate accounts but we also opened a joint account as well and we both contribute to it regularly we'll use it to sometimes pay for like our meals for real estate stuff so right now like our business and personal stuff is kind of merged and we might need to do like a separate thing in the future like a business account plus like a personal one where we can like use it for our utilities, for restaurants and things like that. But that's kind of how we do it right now. I don't see it changing too much in the future. I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, same here. You know, we have separate stock accounts. We own our own separate properties. I mean, there are some properties that we own together as well. But yeah, for the most part, most of the finances are separate, but we do have that one joint account for things that we do together, so. Yeah, I think our investments were probably moving forward gonna do a lot of it like together now yeah what do you think 
Yeah. Yeah. Same. And but again, for mm. most of the investments that require two people, those are going to be bigger investments like real estate. Whereas the individual stock purchases or like crypto stuff, we'll probably sell just to those individually. Yeah, probably. Did you suspect when Sean was going to propose to you? Okay, at the instant when he was recording and he was doing like selfie video, I thought it was kind of weird. I don't think I prompted. I was just I think what I said was like, "Oh, we should take a video." And then he's like, "I'll do it." And he took my camera and like film something, which was new to me. Cause normally if he's gonna do a video, it's gonna be on his camera. Like in my mind, I was like, maybe, but then I was like, ah, probably not. Cause I didn't think he brought it on the trip. So it was just like that, that split second. It, it just came to my mind, but I was like, yeah, probably not. So it was definitely like a surprise to me overall. Cause I just didn't think he brought that ring on the trip at all. Yeah. And normally she like forces me to do it instead of me like taking it from her. <laughs> I guess I was too excited. Yeah, videos? exactly. Normally it's like, let's take a video, take it for us. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. This time I was like, okay. Yeah, he was like eager. So I was like, this is new. Okay. Yeah. When is the wedding? How do you envision, I guess your wedding, family thought, house, kids, car? I guess he's just wondering overall, like what's good. Mm -hmm. When is the wedding? I was thinking like end of next year or possibly beginning of the following year. But I feel like with the pandemic, we're still kind of up in the air too of like what we're gonna do. We were thinking maybe a destination wedding or we just keep it small. I think like for us both, we don't really care too much about like specifics for a wedding. Like some people have in their mind, oh, I want this, 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 like I want this venue. You know what I mean? Like they have all this criteria like for the dress and everything. Like for me, it's just about like us two being there. Every wedding I've been to, it's been special, like no matter the size. So like a small wedding, like my brother had a small wedding. One of my closest friends had a small wedding. It was really nice, actually. It was, you know, really heartfelt. I even cried actually at both weddings, right? So I think it doesn't really matter. The size doesn't really matter to me as long as we're both there. Yep, I agree. Anything to add? Weddings are usually up to... Don't say that. <laughs> We're both planning this together. Yeah. I'm not gonna let you just place it on me. No, I mean, we'll help, I'll help plan and coordinate, but in terms of like the whatever like happens and stuff, I think, you know, I don't, I don't care, so. We're both like that. Yeah. To answer the second part of the question, so we said house, kids, car. So we do have like a property here we're currently staying in that he owns and then for kids, I think we might want one kid. We'll see. And then for cars, we do both have cars. So I think we have like everything we need in terms of family stuff. I feel like that's gonna be later out, like in a few years. I'm not ready yet. I feel like there's a lot I wanna do before I have a family. I know that like your life completely changes when you have a kid. So I just wanna make sure I'm prepared for that. And I'm just like mentally like, okay, let's do it. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think also when it comes to the home and stuff like that, there's a chance maybe we'll buy a different home to live in in the future. Yeah, maybe a different, more permanent home. Like, you know, maybe something bigger since we're gonna have a family. But in my mind right now, like we're good with this right now. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and like having a child, that'll probably be in like four or five years. So nothing in the near future. Does it feel like you're always working together 24 seven? How do you keep up the romance? We keep up the romance. Nice. <laughs> I think that because we both value like what we work on, like we enjoy real estate investing, we enjoy our like online business stuff. It's actually nice that we can do these things together. I feel like we're having quality time, you know, working on stuff together. Like right now, us talking to the camera, like we're actually having fun. We're talking about, you know, our relationship and stuff like that. So I don't know, to me, it's fun having similar interests because I guess with other people, there's probably parts in their lives that, you know, there it, it means a lot to them, but the partner might not be as into that type of stuff. I'm appreciative that we both have similar interests and values because like we can do everything together. That's not to say that we don't have our some of our own like separate interests and stuff like that, but I'm just saying like stuff that's important to us. I love that we can do it together. Yeah, I mean, we were on a work trip for the past three weeks, but we were traveling. We were also experiencing the local activities and it didn't really feel like work, right? So that's probably how, even though we're together, working at the for 24 seven doesn't always feel like work. Yeah, that's another thing. I think we both value like not being tied to work and being like free. A lot of the stuff we work on is for that goal to not be restricted 
financially and to make sure that we live a life that's true to ourselves it would definitely be a different case if like we were trapped in like jobs that were 12 hours a day or something like that and we were all like stuck on our work in my opinion we're building a future where we can spend more time with our family and more time with each other so that's the goal right now so hopefully when we have kids like we can spend all our time with them and we can make our own decisions on like when we want to work and stuff like that so yep what is each other's favorite dish? Okay, let's guess each other's. I don't know if that's what she's asking, but let's just do it. Well, I mean, I know you like kimchi a lot. When we go to Korean food, you always get bibimbap and you like that a lot. Lately, you've been loving like beef noodle soups because of the soupiness and whatnot. <laughs> okay, I would say for you, it's like steak, probably. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, not bad. Okay, I think we're kind of like there. Yeah. I don't think bibimbap is like one of my favorites, but it's like what I would get like for a Korean dish. I feel like he knows though that I just like Asian food in general. So I stick to that a lot. It's like my comfort food, I guess. Am I right with the steaks? Is there other things you could think of? No, I mean, it's pretty solid. I like steaks. Okay. If you had to move somewhere, where would it be? So actually we've been thinking about living in Texas for a year and that could possibly happen in a few months. Who knows if this is actually going to happen, but we're thinking that it could synergize well because basically we could Airbnb out our place and then live there and then actually possibly cash flow with this property with the Airbnb and then have it make up for like the mortgage on a home in Texas. And right now like Bay Area homes are so expensive. So I feel like Texas could be a good option because we have friends there too. And also we invest in real estate there. So we have been networking a lot like on our trip to Texas, we actually spoke with agents, other investors, contractors and stuff like that. So we're actually building out kind of a team out there already. And I have five units there. We are actually closing on another. So we have six units out there. So I feel like a lot of things kind of work well together and we could possibly do more real estate state while we're out there so that's one option i think in the future we're probably going to settle down here though anyway like in the bay area yeah i mean at the same time it also works for your job and it works for my job too because well, i do loans and we don't really have a big presence over in texas and on top of that we have no state tax in texas as well so that's true that'd be nice yeah and my day job like there's people on our team that actually is located in like austin texas so i feel like i could do stuff out there, do like in-person events there. So we'll see what happens. Okay, how did you get started in real estate? Were you into it before each other? That's a good question. So I, I mean, I got my first investment property in 2013 and then like 2014 to 2015-ish, I was going to meetups, but then I kind of went to the online business route and went, you know, became a digital nomad, traveled for two years. And then coming back from travels, I actually did, you know, start going to meetups again, started networking. Some of the people I met through the meetups, like he met as well in the future, like going to meetups as well. So I did invest in real estate before we started dating. I would say that his experience with investing out of state though has helped me a lot too because he's like given me insight on his experience and how to like build a boots on the ground team all this stuff that i would have initially been scared of but i've always been interested in out-of-state investing and so like me i started investing in 2016 bought a couple properties out of state flipped some homes here locally in the bay area and then we met 2019. yeah and one interesting fact is like i think we bonded from that fact that we are interested in real estate investing because like on his dating profile it said real estate investing and I was like, oh, very nice. So like, I remember on our chats, we literally like talked about that stuff before meeting. So as a hint for all you guys out there, don't just put engineer because that's too boring. There's too many engineers out there. You gotta spice up a little bit and put something unique like real estate investor. I mean, he also saw my profile that said like fire movement or something like that. So he knew that I, mean, I was into, so I was into like retiring early, getting financial freedom and all that stuff. So we were on the same page, definitely on your profiles, write stuff that you're like really interested in and want to meet others who are interested in it as well. Yep. Does one of you make more than the other? How is that handled? So we kind of talked about like how we manage our finances. We basically make about the same, so it works well. So even though we do have our separate accounts, I feel like we treat everything as one. I just feel like we're probably just lazy about putting everything together and all that stuff. We know that, you know, we're a unit and we're treating everything like that. We invest together. So that's yeah, great. that's about it. Who has final say over bidding final price, LOL? I guess you're talking about like when we're investing together in rental properties. I don't know, I feel like we both kind of agree and we're just like, all right, this is the number we're trying to get it at. And we try to negotiate 
to that price. So it's all in agreement. It's not like some final say thing. I think we're both like on the same page. We want to get it to a good number that makes sense for both of us. Have we ever walked away from a deal because the seller didn't budge? Probably. Well, okay. You know what? A lot of times it's like we're both interested in it and then we can't get it because other people already snatched it up. Yeah. Huh? So I never had the situation where we came to, to a disagreement on the price. It was always like, oh, we want it. Here's a price that works for us. And then if they don't take it, then and then it's an evaluation. Like, do we want a bit more? We did that before with this current property that we have where the price was higher than our initial offer. And we reevaluated and determined that this was like a good deal for us. Mm -hmm. But yeah, generally speaking, there is no disagreement where it's like, oh no, like we can't bid more than X, Y, Z or something. We generally like talk it out and we're like, all right, that yeah. makes sense. And we, you know, put it on that spreadsheet we have. If you guys are interested in it, check out that property analysis calculator. But we use that basically to evaluate if like properties are going to cash flow. Also, like if we're going to do burrs or flips or whatever, we talk about like, okay, what is that ARV that we can get? And does it make sense, right? So we do it together. We calculate together. Mm -hmm. All right, who's stronger? All right, so let's do a... <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's get ready to rumble. You gonna do that arm wrestling thing right now? All right, all right let's do it. Okay. Ready, right. set, go. Oh, you're oh. lying. <laughs> you're lying. Just push it down. Why? What do you mean? I can't go any further than this. <laughs> I'm rich. You're totally I'm lying. Rich. <laughs> okay. You know what? You're just playing right now. He's obviously <laughs> stronger. Okay. <laughs> He works out all the time. I try to keep up. I drag her with me to the gym. Pretty much. That's what it's like. But health is wealth, right? Health is the most important. That is true. That's true. I'm glad that he works out every day because it has helped me, I think. Because normally I'm just like on the couch all the time. But like when he goes, I'm like, I'm coming, I'm coming. So it's good for me to get that, you know, yep. 10 minute workout in or whatever I do. So. 10 minutes. <laughs> We're there for at least 45 Probably half of that, I'm just like chilling, so. Okay, I'm guessing this is, what's something you didn't know back then and you wish you knew now? I think one of the things is I would worry a lot and maybe I still kind of do, but I feel like I wish I just could just chill and realize like everything's gonna be okay. For example, like with relationships and it's like, will I find the one? Well, I found the one. So like everything's gonna be okay. I just have to have faith in the, you know, the universe. The universe will give me what I need, I think. So like also it's like, will I be able to build passive income streams? This was so like on my mind back in the day. And I was like really trying to do this. And now like I've been able to do that. Plus like the real estate investing stuff that I've always like dreamed of doing. And it's like, it'll all fall together. I don't need to be anxious all the time. Like it's gonna happen as long as you live intentionally and like do the things that you know, you value that's calling to your heart. Yeah, I would say similar to that. When it comes to investing, just start early. Sometimes you may be in a position where you think that it doesn't really work or something like that. Generally speaking, it will work out as long as you're investing in the right areas. So spend a lot of time doing that research. But once you find a decent deal and the property cash flows from day one, go for it. You're gonna find out that the time will go by very quickly. Like for me, I'm so shocked that it's been over five years since I started. And since then, you know, a lot of my properties have almost doubled in value. And that's a lot considering that I only put 20% down. So I made a lot of profit from those small deals. Yeah, that's a great point. I feel like not just in real estate investing, but like everything I've done, like I didn't know everything that I needed to know to, you know, master something like, you know, first try, you're not going to know everything. And I feel like I had the most growth every time I just like attempted something. For example, I was thinking like, should I just rent out my car on Turo or something and test that income stream out? I have no idea like how that works, but I'm just going to like try and do it and like test it out. And like a lot of my audience, I feel like they tell me, oh, I don't like know every single thing about it. So like, I'm still like researching, I'm still studying or like, I don't get it. And like, it's too hard or whatever. But the longer you wait, it's like, you're wasting a lot of time like doing that, especially with real estate. It's like, like what Sean said, like his properties appreciated so much because he started like earlier. So just try to start, even if you don't know every single thing, it's okay. Yeah, and you learn a lot more by doing things versus just like reading or consuming content. Mm -hmm. Like doing it, you'll find all the actual issues and then you'll have to figure it out by like calling different people to help you with your problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you both speak Canto? So I can speak Cantonese. I speak Mandarin. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I speak Mandarin too, but his Mandarin is better than mine. My Kanto is not very good either. It's okay. But, you know, we have time. Like, we could possibly live in, like, Asia in the future and get really good at Mandarin and Cantonese. For me, I actually spent 12 years in Chinese school learning Mandarin, but it's just, I'm not as good because I didn't speak it at home, you know? Like, I would just speak Cantonese at home, so. But we understand each other. Sometimes we speak in Chinese for fun, but. Yeah. Do you think that when we have a kid, we're going to teach the kid Chinese and try to get them? Mandarin for sure. I actually, I think what will be very beneficial is when they're younger, we can just send them off to Taiwan or something for a little bit. Just send get them, them away. Get the hell out! Get out! Well, I mean, get them integrated and have them speaking from a very young age. So a fun fact that you guys might not know, I know French and I learned this as I was a little kid. So even though I forgot most of it, it's still ingrained in me. I feel mm -hmm. like I, I can always pick it up pretty easily. Yeah, like your accent's super good when you speak it. Thanks. And I feel like when you learn it as a kid, it's a lot easier. Yeah. And then you can bring it back in the future. Yep. All right, the question is, Sean, what was the deciding reason for leaving your past career? Honestly, it was the lack of future prospects. So even though it was an engineering role at a pretty you know, well-established company, I saw people who were 30 years older than me, they were my dad's age, and they weren't very content with where they were in life. And for me, I didn't want to be like that. I didn't want 30 years to go by and me being unsatisfied with my life choices, which is why I decided when I'm younger, I, without dependence, I have the ability to try different things and take more risks. Strawberry milk or chocolate milk? Strawberry. I don't drink either, so. Is it one or both names on the title? So we have properties under me, properties under him, and properties jointly. And I feel like in the future, we're probably going to do more together, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. So the ones that we have together, we're on it jointly. And then for the individual ones, it's just, you know, individuals. Ooh, this is good. Did you both complete the Couples Adventure book? So this person has been watching our stories and stuff, so he knows. He actually bought me this present. It's called the Adventure Challenge. So basically it has just like a bunch of challenges that you can scratch off with a coin and then you can do it with your partner. They have different editions. They have like the family edition, the solo edition, the friends edition. I actually have a bunch of them now. We have not completed all the challenges yet, but it's a great book and I feel like we should do more of them again. Yeah, they're just cool date ideas. So, you know, in a relationship, sometimes you don't know what you have to do. You don't watch movies or just go to the mall all the time. So they give you some interesting things to do. Yeah, and it's like sorted by, I mean, not sorted, but they'll tell you like, oh, this one will cost nothing or this one will cost more. You'll need this, this, and this for this one. You're gonna allot like X amount of hours. So you can like, you know, sift through the book and be like, okay, I'm ready for this challenge, not this other one. So it's really fun. If you guys are interested in that, I'm gonna link that in the description below. Okay, so there were a lot of other questions that weren't couples related and were more personal finance finance like specific like oh how do I start real estate investing if you guys are interested in how to start real estate investing and stuff like that I have guides like the ultimate guide to real estate investing I think that was the title check that video out check my channel and search and you'll probably find the topic that you are looking for so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode on our engagement announcement as well as our Q&A hope you guys got a lot of your questions answered by watching this video if you guys have more questions for us Feel free to leave it in the comments below. Maybe we'll do another episode to follow up with this one if you guys are interested in this type of video. And if you guys like this video, make sure to smash the like button. Subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified of my latest videos. Also, make sure to subscribe to Sean's channel where he talks all about real estate investing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.